would like to talk about uh, now two swords and uh, mobile uh, warriors as a case study for uh, new technologies and uh, transformation in the European uh, Bronze Age, um, basically late Bronze Age. Um, uh, however, I would like to start with uh, these two images, um, where typological diversity for thousands of Bronze Age artifacts across European across Europe have been uh, mapped. Uh, and the map on the left shows the situation in the third millennium BC. And at that time, many localized and isolated communication spaces uh, existed. Uh, the map on the left, uh, on the right now, the map on the right, uh, shows how this changed uh, in second millennium um, uh, BC. Uh, we now uh, see uh, quite large connected communication spaces uh, with high diversity of the material culture. Um, and this is an indication of how uh, Bronze Age communication networks developed uh, from regional into uh, interregional or global, as, as we also uh, call them. Um, and how this uh, increased the material diversity uh, in large part, uh, parts of, uh, of Europe. Uh, so the 16th to 13th century BC uh, were a period periods of intensive socio-political development, connectivity, and long distance mobility. And how uh, complex these relations were is particularly visible in the Mediterranean, uh, where of course we have very well organized trade and exchange, as well as very diversified um, relations, allowing producers and distributors uh, to gather for a wide range of consumer needs. It was also standardized on the level of the exchange was also standardized on, on uh, the level of com co uh, commodities uh, trade, such as pottery, for example, wine or olive oil. Uh, for the transportation of the large quantities of metal, a distinctive type of oxide ingots were used, and these are this ones on the, on the, on the image. Uh, and the wider uh, circulation of these from, of course, the coast of Mediterranean Sea, uh, but also Black Sea and Central Europe, uh, clearly points out how strongly interconnected Bronze Age societies were. Uh, for example, four fragments of such uh, ingots have been found in southern Germany. Um, they were made of uh, copper um, from Cyprus and are basically uh, dated to the end of uh, 14 or uh, beginning of 13th uh, century BC. Uh, a good impression on, of the uh, scale of this exchange is given by written sources. Uh, for example, from Ugaritic texts, we find um, very many uh, references to vessels carrying up to 500 tons of cargo and the fleets composed of several such ships. Uh, the cargos of uh, some of them we, we know, we have uh, found them, um, for example, Uluburun, um, Cape Galidonia, or a little bit smaller uh, found near Greece, like Pont Iria or, or uh, Kima. Uh, so we know that merchants, sailors, craftsmen, diplomats, uh, as well as warriors or mercenaries, were meeting in many uh, ports of trade located on the Mediterranean uh, basin, for example, in in Ugari, but not only. Um, and the regular connectivity between Bronze Age communities meant that knowledge could be obtained about faraway places, and traders indeed uh, were the new specialists that provided such knowledge uh, and the organizational skills to connect distant places and their goods, of course. But also warriors uh, became widely sought after as mercenaries in Eastern Mediterranean during the late Bronze Age. In the 13th century BC, long distance uh, communication between temperate Europe and the Mediterranean increased uh, and became become more direct. Uh, as the Mycenaeans uh, became more interested in the northern frontier. And for example, the Balkans uh, on the periphery of the Aegean world uh, became the destination of the political and economic exp um, expansions. Uh, contacts with societies of Italy were also maintained and extended as far as the highly developed Teramala, Teramala culture uh, of the Po Valley. Uh, the Circum Alpine region was strongly connected 
with the important centers of Carpathian Basin. And it was this hub of innovation and resources that allowed the communication to extend even further north, all the way to uh, Scandinavia. Uh, we know from, uh, from, uh, from Scandinavia, thanks to uh, very recent metal analyses, that metals um, from that region have a uh, Mediterranean um, signature. Uh, and also there is a quite a s interesting uh, find of possibly an ingot, of oxide ingot, known from um, Scandinavian rock art. Um, yes, uh, a particularly interesting phenomenon of the Late Bronze Age uh, is the rise of the warrior aristocracy in temperate Europe and its, exp um, and its expansion, especially uh, after 13 1300 BC. This must be explained with respect to the region's position on the periphery of the more advanced and richer centers of the Mediterranean basin. Uh, it also coincided uh, with the emergence of uh, Unfield culture, uh, characterized by its uh, intensive development as well as great mobility. Uh, the most important historical question then is how the processes in European prehistory and European periphery, peripheries uh, were related to the developments uh, in the palatial centers of the Mediterranean. Um, indeed, what makes this period in European history uh, most remarkable are the dramatic events associated with the influx of the Sea Peoples and the eventually destruction of the palatial centers of the South after 1200 BC. Um, and the primary archaeological evidence of these warriors are, of course, their weapons, particularly um, Nahuatl uh, swords that I'm looking into. Um, and they first developed in the Carpathian Basin at, and probably also in Italy uh, around 13th century BC and are characterized by parallel sided cutting edges and thickened cross section. Uh, that gives them more stability and makes them more resistant against bending. Uh, all these properties allowed now two swords uh, to deliver a higher amount of kinetic energy to the edge of the blade and thus provide a higher armor penetrating power. Uh, so now two swords are a good example uh, of weapon technology that spread va uh, fast, probably uh, within one generation, and over vast areas due to the high mobility of warriors and also extreme um, intensity of warfare as a form of social uh, interaction. Um, These uh, swords turned out to be so efficient uh, in combat that they, uh, in 12th and 11th century BC, were widely used in continental Europe, Near East, and of course in the Aegean, uh, very, very often replacing the um, local types of, of swords, which uh, this, maps, uh, this map partly, uh, partly shows. Um, so now two swords that have been found in the Mediterranean basin have been divided into four main groups. Uh, the division or typology, typology was made by Hector Catling, and three of the first types or subtypes have parallels in European continent, while the um, type or subtype number four uh, has been found only in the Mediterranean basin and mostly on its eastern part. So uh, this typology raised the question of a creative culture translation of northern idea taking place in the south as it seems very well documented that the Aegean smiths were experimenting with Nahuatl swords, making them more efficient and more um, uh, suitable, probably for Mycenaean warriors um, for, for, for using them. Uh, so according to this uh, typology, uh, types uh, one and three developed in Central Europe, while type uh, two and four were produced in the Aegean. So, uh, type 2 and 4 uh, can be seen as a kind of hybrid or hybrids that link the European and uh, Mycenaean sword making uh, tradition. Uh, so this brings into focus the idea of a highly uh, mobile Bronze Age class of warriors or mercenaries who are behind the rapid spread of such military technology. 
Um, the presence of such warriors has a profound social and political implication, and this becomes quite clear when we will look about uh, look at the role of uh, mercenary armies throughout the history. Um, there is also a very interesting issue of how returning mercenaries change their home societies, and, and there is some exceptional evidence also in the Mediterranean basin for uh, that have been used as. Uh, you know, good argument for the discussion about traveling warriors and a globalized world. And this is already mentioned wrecks of uh, shipwrecks of Uluburun and Cape Galidonia, uh, where uh, sorts of different type have been found, including also uh, Nahuatl uh, sorts. And there are more of uh, such evidence. And for example, a very famous nautical battle scene at Medinet Habu uh, suggests a Central European origin for at least some of the segment for the sea, of the sea peoples um, because if you will look at the profile of the sea people's ships depicted there uh, you will find them very similar or almost identical to the central european uh, on-field culture motif called uh, bird boat uh, or uh, vogelbarke um, there's also um, another another quite interesting evidence i would say it's uh, men in black sword um, which, uh, with the the sword that bear the uh, cartouche of, of this uh, this Egyptian um, king, um, and it also belongs to the group of Nahuatl swords. It's this type four, and Menemtak is those is, is this 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 king this ruler who was fighting sea peoples. So it's, I think it matches quite uh, quite well. Uh, so archaeological evidence indicates that what happened in the Mediterranean during the 13th and 12th century BC was not just a local chain of economic and social disruptions, uh, but a sequence of events that eventually affected most of the continent. Um, the stability and growth that initially characterized the Mediterranean region vanished, uh, giving way to the decline of the palatial centers. It seems that the appearance of temperate European mercenaries or warriors and settlers as well coincided with, promoted, or even caused this significant political, uh, social, and economic change in the Mediterranean basin. Uh, warrior graves uh, found across the European continent at that time, from Scandinavia all the way to Greece, contained uh, now two swords type, of course, uh, along with other weaponry, such as um, daggers, knives, and, and so on, but also metal items, dress fasteners, jewelry, and toiletiers, which are seen now as, uh, or called now as a um, uh, warrior package. It's worth adding that uh, those items recorded in Greece are, of, are non-local. They are referred in literature as uh, of northern origin. So I believe that these graves um, can be seen as an attempt to establish a new hierarchical social organization in post-palatial times, um, as well as the rise of a distinctive class of warriors whose function has changed in line with changing circumstances. So thank you very much.